Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geeky Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Over in the Photoshop forum, I received a request on how I do my post work and asked if I could show a tutorial on some of the methods that I do. And to answer the question how I do my post work, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty difficult because every image is different and Every image contains things that you that are desirable. So every image contains things that are undesirable. And every image contains things that you wish there were more of, or wish there were less of, or wish that they were there altogether. So I'm going to uh, show you this render that I created in view. This is the raw render right here and just show you how I went through the post work phase to bring out what I wanted this image to be. Well, with this being the original render from view, I created this, I, this image with the idea that this is terraforming the planet Mars. Now, Mars doesn't have clouds and an atmosphere like what we're familiar with here on Earth, but since we're terraforming it, or in other words, creating an atmosphere suitable for sustaining organic life, uh, it makes sense to add clouds in here. Uh, something else that I wanted to add in here, but I didn't want to do it with view, and that is with these buildings, I wanted steam, um, water vapor to be coming out of these buildings, which, by the way, were freebies over at Renderosity, and I believe the creator of them is a fella who goes by the name Richard T. So, knowing that I wanted to do some post work on this in view, I didn't worry about creating any sort of clouds using the uh, using the spectral clouds that view has I figured it'd be so much easier and quicker for me to do it in Photoshop so this is the raw render right out of view and these are the various layers that I added to it in the hopes of creating a realistic atmosphere that's being introduced on the planet Mars so this is what we're going to start off creating today now these are the three renders that I have from from view. This is the original render. This is the alpha render. And this is the Z depth render. And whenever I create an image, I almost always save these three files. And the reason being is it allows me a great deal of flexibility and options when I do some post work in Photoshop. And I don't plan on using the Z depth render. Normally I would use the lens blur filter in Photoshop, but I'm not going to on this one. So I won't be using that one, but I will be using the alpha render. So in Photoshop, I'm going to just drag and drop my view render right into Photoshop and do the same thing with my alpha render. Now with my alpha render I need to change its mode to grayscale. It's going to ask discolor, discard color information. Yep. Come over here to a split screen view and I'm just going to drag it right over. I don't need my original. Now the alpha render, what that is, is all the objects that are in the view scene that are visible to the camera are rendered as white. Everything else is rendered as black. So what this will allow me to do is it will allow me to very easily and very precisely select my entire atmosphere so that I can create some um, adjustments on it without affecting the rest of the image. So uh, with my alpha plane, alpha image selected. I'm going to come up here to select color range and I'm going to click up here in the sky. 
Now um, I'm running CS4, which gives me some cool little options here that some of the other versions don't have. But um, whatever I do here, you can do just as well um, in other versions of Photoshop. The red area is the portion of my image that is unselected. The black is the part that I have selected. And without going into great detail explaining all that this tool does, um, I'm going to select a fuzziness of 30 because down here in, in amongst these pipes on this building, I find I have a good selection of my sky if I set the fuzziness slider to 30 versus 200 percent. I like uh, about 30 percent, so I'm going to go with that. And that creates a selection of my sky. I'm going to select my background. Click on either any of these three masking tools. I'll just grab my magic wand tool, right click, and create a copy. I can delete my alpha image. I don't need that anymore. And this is the sky that I have uh, all on its own layer, isolated from everything else. So I'm going to come up here with my sky selected and adjustments. And I'm just going to play with the contrast a little bit. And see what looks good. I think I'll bring the brightness up a little bit increase the contrast just a bit. Now I'm going to play with my blending modes. And find out, find uh, something that looks really neat. Let's come back up here, play, do some more selections. Now that looks really spooky really brings out the detail in some of these finer, wispier clouds. So that was Multiply. I liked Multiply. Color Burn. Ooh, Linear Burn looks neat. And if I reduce the opacity of that. I think I'll go with Multiply. I liked Multiply. Maybe just bring the fill of that down just a little bit. So there's a before and after. I was able to greatly affect and change the sky without even touching the rest of the image. So I'm happy with that. Call it sky. Come back to my background layer. Now what I want to do is I want to increase the specularity or the highlights of the bright areas in my scene. So come over here to my channels tab, hold down control, click on the RGB channel, and what that does is it selects the luminosity value of that area. In other words, it selects all the light colored pixels. Now I can grab my magic wand tool, right click, create a copy of that, and turn everything off, and there is that layer, the light, the lightness or the luminance of that layer, of that image, all on its own layer. So with that selected, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see the effect that we're going to achieve here. Come up to Filter and come down to Sharpen, Unsharpen Mask. And I'm going to have an amount of about 100, a 100 radius of about 5, 5.5, five and, and Threshold down to 0. I like that. Let me turn it off, turn it back on. You see the effect that that has had. And it looks really neat up here. You can really, it really brings out some of the highlights of this rock material. What I don't like though is the extra brightness on these buildings. So I'm going to come over here and click on my layer mask there, create a layer mask. And with black as my foreground, I'm going to select a paint brush. I'm going to grab a, uh, select a soft paint brush. And with the mode set to normal and opacity to oh, about 70, I guess, I'm just going to paint over this and remove that effect that the unsharp mask filter created. 
Let me move over here and try to get rid of some of this extra brightness that I don't want. Okay, and you know I also don't want it on this landscape over here. It's all it's already bright enough as it is, so I'll just paint over that, get rid of all that brightening effect that the tool that the filter gave it. Let's do a before and after, and I could probably do a little bit more. Okay. Let's click off, turn it off, on, off, on. Let me get this little area over here. There we are. Okay, the next thing I want to do is create that smoke that, or that steam, that uh, gas vapor, water vapor coming up out of these things. So, um, I've already set up a brush ahead of time, and it's this smoke brush right here, and I'll run you through the different options. I have my foreground set to white, background set to this kind of a beige color. The brush that I use is number 11. It's this splatter-looking brush. And I have shape dynamics, a little bit of size jitter. Now I'm going to be using a Wacom tablet, so I have pen pressure selected because I'm going to, um, well, adjust a lot of the flow and the opacity and the scattering of this effect that I'm going to be doing based on the pressure of the Wacom pen. So these are the settings I'm using for shape dynamics. This is what I'm using for scattering. And because I want dual colors, I have color dynamics selected. These are those settings. And other dynamics, these are those settings. I'm not going to go into explaining all the various options of the brush engine, uh, simply because it would take too much time. So because I'm right-handed, I'm just going to rotate my canvas a little bit, come back to my brush, and I want to, I want to paint on my new layer. So I'm just going to very lightly paint in the effect of some steam. Well, it could be smoke, but smoke really wouldn't uh, be good for creating an atmosphere. So I guess we'll settle for steam here. Now I, uh, I realize steam does, it is a gas, and, and it will be expanding as it's as it comes out of here, but for right now I'm just focusing on creating a thin little column of steam coming out of here and I will um, create a more billow, billowing enlarged version in just a few minutes. And I'm going to do that on another layer. I'm going to expand my brush size just a little bit. Now what I want to do is start about right here, start pressing down for, for harder on my pen, and that will help increase the brush size and the flow to get that effect as though the steam is, ex is expanding and it's starting to mingle with the atmosphere and get scattered all over. And it kind of, it really has a, um, a believable effect. And uh, it's pretty much Adobe's brush engine doing all that for me. So underneath both of those layers, I'm going to create a new one. Because now I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and create a atmosphere behind all this because as this steam goes up it's going to start expanding and create essentially like a large cloud or almost like an inversion layer and that's what I'm going to create now now I definitely want this on its own layer because uh, 
I want to add to this layer a Gaussian blur. And I don't want it to affect those columns of steam that I initially created. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to hit R, reset my view. And let's apply a Gaussian blur to this. Let's see what happens when I drop the, drop the number down. Okay, that looks good. Nice blurry effect. I'm going to come back to my original. There we are, this one. I guess I can group those two together. Merge those two. I'm going to create another one just above it. Now what I want to do is try to blend in these columns with the uh, atmosphere. So I'm going to just very lightly just start blending it all in. And I'll be right back. Okay, so that's my uh, steam layer. That's the big... Uh, almost like a fog layer. There's the columns. Okay, I'm going to blend these top two together, or merge them together. And I'm going to come up here to Image, Adjustments, and I think I might play around with the contrast a little bit. Bring the brightness down a little bit. And come back to Adjustments and Color Balance. Let's Add a little more yellow and some red to this. Blend blend the colors in a little bit better with the existing atmosphere. Come over here to shadows. Do the same. Highlights. Oh, I think I've got enough red. Let's add, let's add a little bit of... No, maybe not. I think for the highlights, we'll leave these right as they are. Midtones, maybe back the red off a little bit. And shadows. Okay, so that's a pretty good blend. And it uh, certainly gives a convincing look. Like these things are creating steam and hydrogen and oxygen and introducing them into the atmosphere. And we're terraforming Mars. So this is just a very basic post-working tutorial that for the most part shows you an easy way to make a selection of your atmosphere or the or your sky by using a alpha render and how to easily select the luminance values in your image and increase them or decrease them or change their color hue whatever you want to do with it and it's a ver it's a really simple method of just creating various um, selecting various images of your very selecting various portions of your image, isolating them, and then uh, allowing you to make adjustments uh, very precisely to those areas without affecting the rest of your image. So that's it for this post working tutorial. And I will be creating more in the months to come as I create more view renders. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.